more and more of us are getting cell phones with glass screens, touch screens, and it's hard to keyboard on those. It's hard to e enter in a lot of data. And if you're going to try to blog or Twitter or Facebook from one of these screens, we need a better idea. And I'm here at Swipe today, which has that better idea. Let's hear about it. So who are you? I'm Cliff Kushler. Uh, I'm the founder of Swipe. I've spent uh, many years developing communication technology. Uh, started out working in the field of what's called augmentative communication, which is for people with uh, relatively severe physical disabilities who are unable to speak intelligibly, can't type on a keyboard, can't use sign language. How do you provide a channel of communication for someone in that situation? And there's a, a variety of very interesting technologies that have evolved out of that. Uh, one of the first ones was the T9 technology. I co-founded TGIC uh, back in uh, 1995. And that same technology that it was originally intended for people with disabilities ended up on billions of cell phones. And here it's happening again after I left TGIC. Uh, I got together with a friend of mine, Randy Marsden. Uh, who had a thought for on-screen keyboards and again for uh, computer accessibility and that has evolved into Swipe. Who are you? I'm Mike McSherry, I'm the CEO of Swipe. Uh, spent some time at Microsoft, uh, moved to Australia with them, started up a web development company in the 90s, sold that, co-founded Boost Mobile in Australia and the US, Amped Mobile and met Cliff two and a half years ago. He had been working on the technology for seven years, never showing it to anyone, just perfecting it, and he said it's about time to start showing it to people. Yeah. So here we are. Well, I, f I first met you guys at the uh, TechCrunch 50 conference almost two years ago now, right? Yep. yep. And so what's happened <coughs> in the last two years to your company? Because we, we've seen the technology and we'll get into that, but what's been happening? At, uh, what state is your business in? Well, thanks to Mike, people found out about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we launched a TechCrunch 50 and that instantly sort of catapulted us into some publicity. Uh, in the past six months, we've launched devices with Samsung, Motorola, HTC. Uh, we're probably in 50 different countries having launched on devices with Samsung. In December, Nokia, Samsung, and Docomo invested in us. So we'd been a self-funded company up until that point. So feel we've got the backing of the you know biggest strongest players in the in the industry and um, we hope to continue to grow and, and launch on more devices with more partners yeah uh, Samsung's my favorite a Android phone right now and uh, I, I know you guys are on there explain what it does what why why does swipe make people more productive um, the, the touchscreen is not really designed uh, as a, a tapping mechanism I mean you, you obviously you can tap on it uh, you don't really get the kinesthetic feedback that you get from a keyboard and the devices we're really looking at, e even a tablet, isn't really big enough to support a full-size keyboard. So 10-finger typing, while that's extremely efficient if you've got the right mechanism to support it, isn't really going to uh, work that well on a touch in a touchscreen environment. Uh, the other aspect of, of, of tapping on a touchscreen is you know if you get down to two thumbs or a couple of fingers or one finger wh whatever it is uh, each time you have to you're you're controlling your movement in three dimensions so you're you're targeting a letter you're trying to tap on that lift target tap lift target tap that whole process uh, along with the need that even even when you've got predictive tapping going on some of those taps have to be precise enough when you're tapping the space bar selecting a word whatever it is. They can't all be inaccurate, and that that can slow you down, uh, along with simply the requirement to tap a space in between every word. Uh, what we found with Swipe is, number one, you don't have to be very accurate. You don't have to control that third dimension. You're just, once, once your finger touches the screen somewhere in the neighborhood of the first letter, you just navigate through the letters, uh, do a little scribble if you want two letters in a row, and lift your finger at the end and dive right into the next word. Since you're doing a complete word in one gesture, uh, automatically putting in spaces in an intelligent way, um, I'd say it's not that hard. We actually worked a long time 
refining that, that mechanism that really decides when do you put in a space. Like it seems obvious, well, after a period, you want to put in a space, right? Yeah, but is it a URL? Is it an email address? So we, we looked at where you do and don't want to put in spaces. And the period was one of the things that we waffled back and forth on and then realized, well, wait a minute, it's just another swipe object. So a period and a space, or if you want a period and two spaces, is just a quick little gesture that, again, doesn't have to be accurate. So it's much faster just to do a little slash from the period to the space than it is to try and tap the period, tap the space, which you'd have to do in a tapping mechanism. Do you have any uh, uh, statistics on how much faster people are once they once they get into a swipe keyboard instead of a, a tapping keyboard? Um, we actually haven't done formal usability studies. Some other organizations have. Um, I, I'll let Mike jump in and speak to that. <coughs> well, well, swipe holds the current Guinness Book of World Record for fastest speed texting. So, uh, one how fast was that? Do you remember? <coughs> you remember it was what? over forty words per minute. Uh, though it was qu kind of in an awkward environment because it was being filmed, so he had to hold the, uh, the phone up to camera angle, so he could have gone much faster. Uh, but that in itself shattered the then existing uh, world record for, for speed texting. In usability studies uh, with, with our own beta group testing, where we've put swipe out in, and we've actually tracked and logged the, the actual usage statistics from, from that group, um, we've been averaging over 40 words per minute, and that's average. Of, of the sample group. So uh, as to how that compares against thumb keypads or you know, on-screen keyboards of you know, other uh, technologies, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, what we do know, though, is we don't always focus on speed, but it's just the efficiency. So the combination of the What's the difference? Well, it's the accuracy and the, uh, and the speed as well. So the error correction, so you're not constantly putting out gibberish you know, messaging which some things that might work fine in SMS messages, you might, wanna, might not want to put out in business emails. So when we look at efficiency, we're talking about entire word accuracy, including recognition, go back and change and correct errors. And I do know that in some usability studies um, that some partners have done, uh, there's a massive perception that swipe is far faster. So in very, very early just familiarization, 10 minutes of usage, swipe, has, has been faster for uh, groups than, than any sort of tapping prediction technologies. But in terms of perception, it was 95% perceived swipe to be faster. Interesting. So um, there's perception versus reality, and that's just in the first 10 minutes of usage. Um, we only expect that their performance improvements would continue. How does it, since you're holding a tablet PC, and I'm, I'm using an iPad and, and looking at the new Android and HP and Windows, I was just at Microsoft yesterday, they are continuing to work on tablets. A lot of times I'll have a Bluetooth keyboard. How, how do you think it, com or do you have any data of how it compares to a regular standard uh, hard keyboard that you're typing on? Uh, we don't, and it's, re it's not really a meaningful comparison. I mean, if you're in an environment, if you're an experienced 10-finger touch typist, I mean, there, there's no way any other method is, is going to approach that in terms of speed because you can, you can instantaneously go from one finger to another. You're, you know, obviously with, with experience, you're going to blow away anything where you have to navigate from, from one key to another. But if you compare it to any other touchscreen technique, um, e even if you have a technique where, where you might approach it in speed, again, there, there is that perception factor which, uh, is, is not to be ignored. You can say, well, if they're just as fast, what does it matter? It's, it's the experience that you have in using it. And, and there's this magical feeling, especially the first time you use it, that it's like, wait, how did it do that? Why didn't it get all those other letters that I crossed over? You know, it, it, you know, it's like it's reading your mind at one level. And that experience of the ease and the, the fun of, of actually using it, that you, you're, you're entertained while, while you're inputting your text. And that is, yeah. I think, a big part of the perception that, gosh, it's faster. You know, I didn't even notice the time that went by. It's, it's like I'm not laboriously tapping away and I hate inputting text. It's like, wow, that's cool. And even if it takes the same amount of time, if yeah, you're the, having more fun doing it, yeah. it's... Yeah, there's something more organic about it. Whether you're holding a, a phone or a tablet, you, you're, you're swiping through everything. You're using gestural control. Let me flick side to side. Let me pinch zoom. Let me scroll up, down. 
And then to tap, you either need to go shift into different mode or dunk, 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 which is not emblematic of other ways you're using the, the device. So we think swiping is more organic and matches the other touch gestural controls that you're using on devices. Yeah. Most of my listeners probably know this, but the QWERTY keyboard was designed to slow down typing because it, w it was designed on a mechanical typewriter. And, and if you went too fast, it jammed, right? So they figured out a way to, s to actually make you more inefficient so that the machine could keep up with your typing speed. Of course, we don't have those constraints anymore because we're on digital devices. Are you looking at rearranging the letters to make it even more eff efficient? Because the, you know, if, you, if you actually learn the Devorah keyboard, um, you can be e even faster than a Quir QWERTY keyboard, right? You know, thousands of years from now, someday there may be a, a keyboard other than QWERTY that achieves common usage, but uh, I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> uh, a, kind of a fun story, when, when TGIC first started out, we came up with T9, and again, it was in the context of uh, Martin King had invented a little uh, circuit board with eight LEDs in a circle that would fit on the inside of a pair of glasses, very robust recognition. You could glance at one of the LEDs, it would flash saying, I see that you looked at me. So a little keyboard with eight keys that was eye, eye movement activated. And then we said, well, how are we going to make it work? And we came up with uh, what we'd like to call later T7 of 9, um, because you actually only had letters on seven keys. and. Uh, to make it work maximally efficiently, I mean, you can do A, B, C, you know, D, E, F on, on each key in sequence, but we did a lot of work. We came up with this pretty complex algorithm to try to optimize. If I move the letters around, how do I make it most efficient in disambiguating that sequence of keystrokes? And with an A, B, C layout, about one word in 20, statistically, you're going to say, you're not getting the word you want first, and you say, no, give me the next word. So you hit that next key that selects the next uh, object in the list. With the layout we came up with, that was one word in 100. So from our engineering perspective, it's five times more efficient. Yeah. You know, not, you know, there's, there's different ways of measuring it and quantifying it, but uh, we said, you know, this is way better. And certainly for someone with a disability, that's a, a, a big significant difference and, and well worth learning a new keyboard layout. We went out to the phone manufacturers. Number one, we're trying to describe this disambiguating mechanism and over the phone every single time it was, oh yeah, yeah, once for an A, twice for a B, three times for a C, I know what you're talking about. No, 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 it's just one time. <laughs> and nobody would get it until we did a demo. But we, we just about drove TGIC out of money, close the doors, walk up and go home because we were trying to tell them, oh, and you just want to rearrange the letters on the, on the keypad too. Look, if you do this, it's so much more efficient. And finally, we're in desperation, we said, well, you know, it's less efficient, but let's see if we can make something happen with an ABC layout. And boom, the rest was history. Interesting. Um, and so don't fight, don't fight human beings. Don't, don't, well, don't, and, and QWERTY yeah. is only for English languages. Well, it, yeah. for, for some languages. I mean, we support dozens of languages, and there's Azerty and Quartz and Cyrillic and Devangari, and there's just a, a dozen, well, there's 20-something yeah. different keyboard layouts that can get composed. So. Uh, you just have to go with the standard norms that have been created. Yeah. We'll let someone <laughs> yeah. else introduce a new <laughs> keyboard model. So we're, we're stuck with a keyboard model beca because uh, of the old typewriter. Swipe can, work. <laughs> swipe can work in any format or fashion you want to do. That's fine. We're not going to be the ones introducing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just a fun uh, history of the keyboard yeah. and, uh, and it shows how screwed up humans get sometimes because of our constraints of a hundred years ago, you know, we still we, live with it. Yeah, te technologically we have that flexibility. I mean, the, the keyboard is just, you know, an image of the keyboard and this uh, file definition of what it is, and, and we can keep the same database and just change that keyboard definition. So as, as we gain success in the marketplace, we can certainly offer that as a feature at some time yeah. in the future if there's really a demand for it. I mean, and, and, and sh I'm surely you could design uh, a more effective layout. I mean, one, one of the things we looked at is the, the U, the I, and the O are right next to each other. And that's probably the source of the biggest ambiguity. Um, you know, you can look at hit, hot, hot. You've got all these words that only differ in that one letter. So depending on how accurate you are going over to that uh, particular vowel, you, you can get swipe saying, oh, you, you probably meant hot. No, I meant hit. Um, you know, it's going to be right there, you know, second or third in, in that word list that comes up. But uh, for maximal efficiency, you're, you're wanting to get that word to come out first.
What, what about, for, you, you touched on foreign languages. I mean, in Japan, a character is an entire word, right? Or it, I think in Chinese, it's the same thing, right? Does swipe work the same way in Chinese or Japanese as it does in English? You're, you're speaking to the master. Close okay. fluent, <laughs> yeah. fluent in Japanese. <laughs> well, the whole of Bible, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I got my PhD at the University of Tokyo, so I'm oh, pretty wow. fluent in Japanese um, and have, have a passing familiarity with Chinese just from developing these systems. Uh, but in both cases, one of the most common ways of inputting text, and it naturally evolved that you know, when they first were exposed to computers, they would get computers with QWERTY keyboards. So a, a natural way to do that was to type in the pronunciation of what they were trying to enter. In, so in, in Japanese, you know, kore wa pen desu, you know, K-O-R-E, uh, and wa is H-A, but that, we won't get into that. <laughs> um, so that, that's, that's a very common way that, that, that many people do it, that Virtually everyone who's used a computer is going to be familiar with, in the case of Chinese, it's called pinyin. In Japanese, it's called romaji. It's just the, the, the native language term for, for those, those character sets. Um, and that maps, you know, obviously very clearly in, into a, a swipe approach where we can swipe in the, the pronunciation in a way that's familiar to, to the end user and have that aut get converted just as if they were typing on a regular keyboard. And, um, we're already finding uh, a lot of enthusiasm for the Chinese solution that we've got, and we're very shortly coming out with our, uh, our Japanese system, so. Very cool. Um, what's business like? And, and how do you guys make money? I, I assume you're licensing this to OEMs, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it's I'm a per sure. device licensing fee is, is our typical business model. And uh, you know, we, we hope to sign OEM partners and, and achieve a degree of ubiquity in the, in the mobile OEM space. We've launched devices with Motorola, Samsung, uh, and HTC uh, globally in, in pretty much all regions of the world now. And you're going to see continued scale with those, those partners and new partners launching devices shortly. Do you have any idea, like even on one phone, how many people, what percentage of people turn it on and whether they keep using it? <clears throat> well, in uh, probably about... Uh, half to two-thirds the devices we've launched on we've been set as the default keyboard uh, so we, we do know that uh, there are some usage statistics to where over 70 percent uh, on, on one device we've done a call down over 70 percent of the people still use swipe on the device and uh, of the people that use swipe exclusively on the device 94 percent said they can never go back to tapping so the stickiness and loyalty is tremendously powerful with swipe um, they just say it's it's archaic to go back to tapping once you've gotten used to the swipe methodology. Are we ever going to be on, uh, see swipe on Apple products? Because Apple, you know, Steve Jobs doesn't like people to mess with their keyboard and their layouts. That they blocked Google Voice from shipping, for instance, because of that. And I haven't seen yet swipe on an Apple device, so I, s I assume you're in that same boat. M most partners would hope to provide better user experiences. We think we help to provide a better user experience. You're such a politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we, we'd love to be on Apple products. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, we, we hope for a degree of ubiquity in, in working with all partners. Yeah. And uh, Swipe has had tremendously positive end user reception. So how that translates into business opportunities for us, we'll, we'll see. Well, I, I certainly want it on my iPhone and my iPad, but you know, yeah. I know Steve Jobs is a, a tough customer to deal with. <laughs> Well, what, one of the other, I mean, back, back to, you know, standards and norms and, you know, QWERTY. Uh, one of the things that we hope to solve is input across different device platforms. Yeah. So you go to your TV and now you've got Twitter on TV and Google TV and Apple TV and, and, and there's an input experience Boxes. associated with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's an input experience. Some have it on a remote control. Some are syncing, you know, Bluetooth Inputting keyboards. Text on an Xbox is horrid because um, right? you have to go so up and down. Up, and, yeah. and by the way, they don't use a QWERTY keyboard, and it messes with my head. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but that, that's, I mean, cars use, sometimes use alphabetical, sometimes use uh, QWERTY. And uh, at the broadest level, we want Swipe to be a, the keyboard solution for all screens, whether you point at it, point a remote control at it, or touch it. And we think Swipe translates across that. And some of the, o, you know, a lot of our OEM partners produce multiple device categories, and they love the vision that you could go from the TV to your smart appliance to your car to your phone to your tablet in the same keyboard experience across all of them. Right now it's a hodgepodge. You know, try getting into your rental car and inputting text. Yeah. Um, and we, we hope to sort of solidify that usage experience. 
And I think keyboard input has demonstrated and shown that it sort of naturally evolves to standard. It, you know, you've got the physical keyboard, T9 became you know, the dominant standard, and you know, we'd like to be in a position of helping to improve that for uh, the touchscreen experience. Yeah, Are, have you uh, seen a Xbox Connect yet? Uh, that's coming out in November, but you use your, it's a camera with a laser system and you use yeah. gestures to stand in front of it and, and do things with it. And do you think you w your keyboard, your swipe would work with that kind of it, it, input method? We haven't actually implemented it yet, but I don't see any uh, technical reason why that, that couldn't happen. We, we, we have other solutions with camera sensing points and uh, to do trace paths. You just need start and stop the trace path. Um, we work with a Nintendo Wii remote control. I mean, there's, there's a variety of solutions and we've had discussions with all the, we'll call the game control systems. Yeah, well, very cool. Any last things that you want to tell me about what you're doing and where you're going? Well, we, we met you two years ago at the inception of the company, and I'm glad that you came back to sort of see that where we are stand today. We've, uh, we're, we're proud of, of what we've achieved in the past two years. Um, we're sort of dependent upon the OEM cycles of them launching and deploying devices, so it's not quite as rampant of growth as maybe we'd hope, but uh, you know, we hope to achieve billions of units shipped. Yeah, it's not every uh, company that tells me that, right? That we're, we're hoping to ship on billions of units. <laughs> you know, most startups are like, we're happy if we get to a million. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, one of the things that I, I sort of, you know, Cliff, I think T9's been put on five billion devices and, and our, our two board members that we brought on board, uh, Rob Burgess uh, was CEO of Macromedia, shipped Flash on billions of units, and the other board member was CEO of Phone.com, CEO of OpenWave and, you know, OpenWave browser, it was shipped on billions of units, so we're sitting around the table with three people that have shipped software in the billions of units, and um, I don't think you find that sort of scale level of software deployment uh, very often. Yeah. Well, congratulations, and uh, thanks for making our lives easier. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.